Chapter 12 The Sage Leader Bodhisattva The sage leader Bodhisattva, who was in the assembly, rose from his seat, prostrated himself with his head at the feet of the Buddha, circled him thrice from the right, bowed upon his knees, brought together his two palms with crossed fingers, and said, O world-honored one of great compassion, you have fully awakened this assembly and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination to the inconceivable things of the Tathagata. World-honored one, what is the name of this Mahayana teaching? How should we receive and observe it? What merits will derive from it? How should we protect those practicing its teaching? And to what stage will it lead? After saying these words, he again made the same prostration and the same request for a second and third time. The world-honored one then said to the sage leader Bodhisattva, Excellent! Excellent! Virtuous man, it is good that you are able to ask the Tathagata about the name and merits of the Sutra for the benefit of Bodhisattvas in this assembly and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination. Listen attentively to what I now tell you. The sage leader Bodhisattva was filled with joy upon hearing this. He and the assembly kept silent to hear the teaching. The Buddha said, Virtuous man, this sutra is expounded by Buddhas as many as sand grains in a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, and a hundred thousand Ganges rivers, is blessed by all the Tathagatas in the past, present, and future is the refuge of all bodhisattvas in the ten directions of space, and is the pure and clean eye of the sutras of the twelve divisions of the Mahayana canon. This sutra is called the Dharani of Complete Enlightenment of the Mahavipulya teaching, the sutra of the whole truth, the mysterious Samadhi king, the decisive state of Tathagata and all differentiation arising from the self-nature in the Tathagata Garbha. By these names you should receive and observe it. Virtuous man, this sutra reveals only the Tathagata state and can be expounded only by the Tathagata Buddha. If all bodhisattvas and future living beings in the period of the Dharma's termination practice according to it, they will progress gradually until they attain the Buddha stage. Virtuous man, this sutra is a Mahayana teaching of instantaneous enlightenment, and living beings of instantaneous potentialities who practice it will be awakened. It is also suitable for all other potentialities in their practice of gradual self-cultivation. It is like a great ocean which does not concede its privileges to small streams. All drinkers of its water, from gadflies and mosquitoes to asuras, will quench their thirst. Virtuous man, a man filling a great chilicosm with the seven treasures and giving them all as alms, cannot be compared to another man who hears the name of this sutra and understands the meaning of one of its sentences. Virtuous man, if someone teaches as many living beings as the sand grains in a hundred Ganges rivers to attain our hardship, his merits cannot be compared to those of an expounder of half a gatha of this sutra. Virtuous man, if a man hears about this sutra and believes it without doubt, you should know that he has planted roots of virtue and wisdom, not only in just one or two Buddha lands, but in as many as the sand grains and the Ganges, thus qualifying him to hear about its teaching. Virtuous man, you should guard all practicers of this sutra in the period of the Dharma's termination by not allowing evil demons and heretics to disturb their bodies and minds and force them to backslide. In the assembly, the fiery-headed, the wrecking, the blue, and other Vajra holders numbering 80,000 with their retinues 
arose from their seats, prostrated themselves with their heads at the feet of the Buddha, circled him thrice from the right, and said, World honored one, in the period of the Dharma's termination, we will guard all living beings who are able to practice this decisive Mahayana teaching as we would our own eyes. We will lead our followers to their Bodhi mandalas and places of self-cultivation to guard them day and night so that they will not backslide. We will see to it that their families will permanently be free from all calamities and hindrances, that no illnesses and epidemics will visit them, that their wealth and treasures will always be adequate for their upkeep, and that they will never be in need. Thereupon, Mahabrahma Devaraja, the king of the twenty-eight heavens, the king of Mount Sumeru, and the four Lokapalas arose from their seats, prostrated themselves with their heads at the feet of the Buddha, circled him thrice from the right, and said, World honored one, we too will guard those observing this sutra, so that they can live in peace and will not backslide. Thereupon, the powerful king of demons, or Mara, called Kumbanda, and one hundred thousand other Mara kings rose from their seats, prostrated themselves at the feet of the Buddha, circled him thrice from the right, and said, World honored one, we also will guard those observing this sutra, and will look after them day and night, so that they will not backslide. If ghosts and spirits approach within forty miles, or one yojana, of the dwelling place of any devotee, we shall pulverize the trespassers. When the Buddha had finished expounding this sutra, all the bodhisattvas, divas, nagas, and others of the eight classes with their retinues, as well as the diva kings and brahmins who had listened to his teaching, were filled with joy and believed, received, and observed it. <laughs>